right, we're recording. Oh, all right. Uh, welcome to the July uh, board meeting, and we're going to move forward here. We have a few things on our agenda tonight, so let's call the meeting to order. Do you have the time, Jeff? Seven oh four p.m. Okay. All right. Um, so you have the agenda uh, before you. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? I will make such a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of adopting the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Motion carries. The agenda is adopted. Next up is the president's report, and um, I will get to some member issues here in a little bit, but I want to start out with um, just a, a saying. I don't know if I made it up or if I read it somewhere, but we need to be for something, not just against something as a community. And I think everyone in the community should consider that. So, um, moving forward, I would like um, for just a second to talk about <clears throat> the accomplishments of this board, and there have been numerous. One is um, the board has worked uh, to prepare uh, for videos. They should be released soon. Uh, however, I will say that the videographer has had an illness in the family. Can everyone hear me okay? And I apologize for the mask. I'm having surgery soon and just don't want to get sick. Anyway, uh, so it's been delayed a little bit. I also want to say, in fairness, uh, when we first started looking at doing these videos, one of the videos uh, had some several members that are candidates for the board. And rather than put that video first, we put it last so it would come after the election. Just so you know that. Okay, so hopefully we'll be very proud of the four videos coming out. We did address the lodge deck at the beginning of this term. Uh, we also worked to rectify the dam assessment arrearage and made it known to the membership very publicly. Club lots, as you may remember, we have uh, limited the sale of club lots. Uh, so that we can sustain our neighborhood and maintain our water supply and maintain our beautiful wooded environment, which we all come here uh, to begin with, to see that, to live in that. We have started to take a deeper dive into emergency medical services. As a matter of fact, it's a part of our key initiatives ad hoc group which we just created also this year. And this group we'll talk a little bit more about later is looking at, oh, about six different important areas um, to look at from a long range plan, like two to five years and beyond so that we can address these issues. Uh, we have created a segment called In the Know in the Echo and hopefully you find the information there informative. We have worked to create hybrid meetings and some of you who are here tonight can see what a hybrid meeting looks like. So if we have board members that are traveling remotely, they can view us, we can view them, as well as we're not doing a dial up telephone and hearing and not being able to, you know, understand whether they're saying uh, yay or nay. So this is um, much better technology. And so we're trying to get with the 21st century. Anyway, uh, we do have an electronic ballot proposal. Uh, this is a first, so it's a proposal to add electronic ballots to all of our other uh, remaining ways to vote uh, in an election. We are, as a group, addressing sustainability. That's part of our key initiatives that we're uh, looking at. Additionally, we have reopened the lodge and it seems to be going uh, very, very well. So appreciate all the work that everyone here has done to make that happen. So thank you, uh, Jeff. And I think Jim, uh, a thank you is due to the management committee too for that. Uh, we have had outreach listening meetings regarding lakes. 
we have approved a road safety subcommittee and good things are coming up. And by the way, on the way here, I'm driving by the organic garden and I always make that curve and I'm like, oh my God, I hope nothing's coming. And I've literally about gotten smeared there several times. So I could look in that mirror and see that no one was coming around the corner. And I was really pretty happy about that. Um, we have uh, recently had our auditors uh, nearly complete the audit. Um, we're still waiting on the recommendations. Talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, we've had our first deer calling. Uh, and that was limited to the community or the common areas to protect the safety of members and property. Um, we'll have to see how we move forward uh, this coming season. With that. Um, we've updated and modernized our website. You may have noticed that it is uh, pretty easy to use and um, I think is attractive. Uh, we have saved the club thousands of dollars by going to an electronic echo and directory but we uh, still provide paper copies to those that want it. And I think that was an important addition because there are folks that don't just don't do electronic, not comfortable, don't like it, or don't have it. So anyway, those are a few of the accomplishments and I wanted to start out on a positive note. Uh, in regard to the audit, as I mentioned a moment ago, they have completed their work and reviewing everything. Um, however, the recommendations will not be prepared for another one to two weeks. At this time, I'd like to take just a minute, and I know, uh, Jim, you brought up in one of the management committee meetings as well as here about whether to do an annual audit. And I don't think we ever took a vote on that. No, I don't think it was ever been a vote. And I would like to make a, make a motion now, and we can, of course, discuss um, about um, having an annual audit rather than every other year. So, will someone make that motion for me? I'll make that motion. Thanks, Cabot. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Mary Beth. So, um, you want to have any discussion regarding an annual audit? Well, what's the cost? Is that something that we can sustain? Can we it's use, it's not it? a lot more. It's barely any more because basically they got to do double the work and do a two year audit. They're doing a two year audit versus the one year audit. So it's basically very little additional cost to do every annual audit. I sort of feel like our members would like to have things reviewed, more checks and balances. Mm -hmm. And so from that perspective, um, I think it would be wise to do. Yeah, Beth, you probably want to move the microphone. I know, I was thinking that, but I, when I type, it keeps typing in there. I think I our you members fine. would like it. <laughs> Any other discussion on the topic? All right, all of those in favor of an annual audit, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. So, annual audit, it will be. Um, the key initiatives group has, oh, like I said, six or seven, five or six, seven, we'll go over them, areas that we're looking at. One is security, another one is safety, and that really is health and safety, and it includes, um, well, really, the focus is on emergency medical services. We also have the lodge as another area that we're looking at, package handling, technology, sustainability of our water supply and recreation enhancements. So a few of them I would like to go over tonight a little bit. Mary Beth, I think you're in charge of the group for security. Can you give us a quick update on that? Sure. So um, we did have a member who has uh, at his apartment complexes cameras and ability to put cameras all over the place and he's been working with me. Uh, he feels that we would need to upgrade our DVR system to make it digital at a cost of about $1,300. Um, that member was willing to donate the first thousand and I believe we could raise the other 300 uh, through donations. But we would be able to put several cameras, including up at the docks, um, 
and all around various areas where we might be having some problems with security here. So that sounded very promising. Um, Jim, I reached out to JJ just to make sure it would work okay with the gate system. So I'm waiting to hear back from him on that. And assuming it works okay, I think we could probably move forward with that, which would be great. Um, so that's one thing. Second is we did uh, speak with legal counsel regarding the ability to perhaps um, do some kind of checks on new members to Hideaway Hills to make sure we don't have you know, serious felons, um, sexual predators, things like that to protect our community before they get here. Because as it stands now, we pretty much rubber stamp anybody that wants to buy. Um, and he does see the possibility that we can do that. Um, right now, I'm reviewing forms from different communities around Ohio uh, to try and see what would work best for our community and hoping we can move forward with that as well. I don't know if the board feels, uh, you know, they want to talk about that at all, if they feel like that's appropriate or not appropriate. Um, there are some communities that don't do it, and there are some that do. Uh, so that's one of the things we were looking into. Um, also, we have reviewed certain areas that seem very vulnerable as far as fencing, and we're going to prepare and give management a five-year plan to shore up some of the perimeter that seems weak around the hills. It doesn't mean we're going to become a fortress because there's some natural barriers, but um, we have reviewed some areas that are pretty open and um, and probably do need some uh, some fencing added. So that seems like more like a four or five year plan and I'm waiting on um, linear square footage of the first portion of that right now in order to determine cost and submit that to management, I'm hoping to get that in the budget. Um, if any of the members have areas that they're worried about and um, you know, might maybe in their backyard that I don't have access to and they wanna reach out and contact me, um, I'm happy to receive that information and take a peek and see if we can add that area onto the list. So please feel free to reach out. Um, there's a few other areas of security, but those are the ones. Um, Jim will probably talk about the gate system that management has approved at this point, and we'll be talking about that later, so I won't go into that. But um, that's those are the main ones that are moving along right now. Okay. Thanks, Mary Beth. And um, Jeff, do you want to update us a little bit on package handling? Sure. Um, Eric Boisco has, gonna, has been a big help here. He and Ginger had done a lot of the legwork prior. Uh, so we were talking to Amazon Hub, a uh, couple of different choices there. One, which would cost us absolutely nothing if they decided that they wanted to accept our location would be to put something um, on Hideaway Hills property, but would actually require us to allow other locals to, to come and, and use those mailboxes. Uh, we'd have no access to them. They would be just sitting wherever, uh, fitness center parking lot or wherever we, wherever we allowed them to place them. So not the best option. Uh, second option is uh, what they call apartment lockers and you get in indoor or outdoor. Um, we can get 33 feet, which is the maximum per per system, uh, you can get multiple sets of those if you want. Um, and that would allow us to take up to 209 packages at a time or have 200 and it's 209 lockers, um, various sizes. We would probably want to get a few more bigger and, and reduce that size a little bit, but rarely are we getting 200 plus packages a, a day. Uh, so as long as people were picking up their packages in a timely manner, that seemingly would work just fine. Um, that is for currently, and they're not discounting anymore like they were last year. Currently for an indoor unit, 32,000 plus tax for an outdoor unit, 38,500 plus tax for that 33, uh, that 33 feet worth. The savings is because they don't have to if we put it indoors, they don't have to cover it with any any type of um, 
I'm trying to think of what they call any type of a roof, basically. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, right now we're spending 1500 to 2000 a month uh, on someone to handle those packages. This would be, require minimal handling. Security would have administrative access to those lockers, as would the office, in case somebody left with something in there for an extended period of time. But it would be minimal compared to what uh, what we're doing now. So you know, return on investment well under two years, I think. Yeah. If I did my mouth right, math right. So that sounds like a good option. What are what procedure? What process do you want to follow to make this happen? Where are we budgetarily? We know we have a little bit of a, a gap between when we get our, you know, balance out our our our, our ROI. But it sounds like a really worthy. Uh, so Jim Sigafus? Well, I mean, basically we'll have to look at that in the 2022 capital plan. Um, we've got a number of other things kind of slated in that, some golf course repairs, like uh, maintenance items that we want to address. But I mean, obviously package handling is a big issue to look at. So you know, we can put that in the plan and see if we can get that scheduled and get that in part of the plan, in part of the budget. For 20. That, that would be good. I think our members would like that. And I think our security uh, staff would like that too. Well, there's no way that could fit inside that existing structure that's just been covered. 33 feet could. Yeah. Okay. And that, and that that's why not only is that one unit, but that is also so that's where it would be. fit. And you only need a couple of inches on each side, but you need 36 inches in front of them so that they can maneuver and get things into the locker. Uh -huh. Is that only Amazon packages? No, they will actually take now FedEx, UPS, USPS, and Amazon. And do they send a notice when a package is delivered then electronically? Apparently the system does. It's actually an electronic system. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Another area that we're looking at is the sustainability of our water supply. And we have... Um, talked to two retired hydrogeologists, as well as the ODNR, um, the state hydrogeologist. What we would like to do, and, and we'll need more discussion, I think, as a board and maybe as a membership, but we need to assess what our water supply is. And one of the only ways to truly assess it is to have different areas of Hideaway Hills uh, monitoring their wells. So if we had 10 to 12 homes that agreed to have their well monitored in terms of depth uh, on a yearly basis, we would be able to determine what's happening with our water level. In order to do that, though, you have to open a closed system, meaning a well, um, which can, of course, insert bacteria, which would then mean we would need to have the well shocked and so there would be a price tag involved. We'd have to have someone come in to do it. It would be the best thing. I think to have someone else knows what they're doing, measure the water depth of the different wells, as well as close the system and shock it so that our members aren't required to do that. But over time, we would get a pretty good view of what's happening with our water supply. As we add more homes, that does impact uh, our aquifers. Um, and then recharging of our aquifers occurs, of course, more when we have greater uh, times of precipitation. And if we have several drought years, that could affect it. But um, as a club, I think it is better for us to be aware so that if we need to, we can look at how we address, you know, going forward if there's a problem. So we are discussing that um, on a little bit of a lighter note. Uh, we have a recreation enhancements group and they're looking at volleyball courts and horseshoes. One of the proposed areas is maybe down by the amphitheater, uh, but the location is yet to be determined. So any discussion on that? Okay, so I'm going to get into a more controversial area now, and that is uh, complaints by members against members. So we have received complaints. We have received some responses um, from the ones that were, I guess, 
people being complained of. These have come in over the last few days and some as uh, recent as today. So we have talked with our outside counsel and our outside counsel says, has said that he has not had a chance to review for one reason. He was out of town until Monday and many of the complaints didn't come in. Well, some of them not until today. So he had a family emergency out of town, he's back. And his advice was, let's see. Well, he indicated that he has not had time to fairly review the complaints. And he is advising this board that an appropriate review must occur before any discussion or actions can be taken. He advised that due process and fairness to both sides takes time, whether we all like that or not, it does take time, even in Article 9, people are given 40 days prior to the hearing. Just remembering that. He further advised that these issues should not be addressed in tonight's meeting and that they may more appropriately be addressed by the newly elected slate of trustees following the annual meeting. To improperly address such issues without appropriate review and investigation, this close in proximity to the election could prejudice the election one way or another. So it is not my intent to bring these forward and try to discuss these tonight when we aren't prepared as a board to do so uh, and we do not have people here to respond. So that's all for my president's report. Thank you. Next up is a uh, review of the June board minutes uh, with a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the June board minutes. I'll second. Um, do we have any discussion on that? Did anyone see any problems with the minutes? Okay, all those in favor of adopting the minutes from the June board meeting, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Uh, Mary Beth, correspondence. Mike nine. Uh, Ten. Is that a hot mic? It's a hot. Okay. Is that better? Um. So, with regards to correspondence, are based on what our attorney has told us. Uh, we're not to address um, correspondence today regarding any of the complaints. Okay. Uh, treasurer's report. Have it. Yeah, it's, it's a busy time of year, uh, a lot of things going on. And of course, this is only for June. A lot more has happened in July to this point. Uh, but we began June at uh, with a balance of 139,285 between all the committees total. And we ended the month uh, at 153,888, uh, so there was a lot of activity in June. Uh, for sure. And so with that, I make a motion that we accept this. Uh, Treasurer's report for the committees here at Hideaway Hills. No, I'll second. Um, any discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thanks, Cabot. Appreciate it. Um, Jim, do you want to do the management committee report, please? Yes. Thank you, Linda. Uh, the Hideaway Hills board meeting management committee notes for July 2021. Uh, the management committee is looking to improve our security in the hills. We are proposing to go with signature, signature control controls proposal for an RFID gate system. We have explored multiple vendors and no other, uh, no others want to bid on the project. Signature is the current provider of our gate controllers. The total bid is 40,307 plus $5 each for RFID, RFID tags. There are a number of questions around this to be answered yet as far as implementation. The management committee is working on answer though, answering those so we can communicate to this to the membership prior to moving forward. 
some of the sample questions to be answered yet. Uh, do we buy back the existing controllers or trade them in for RFID tags? We charge the RFID tags and how much charge for the RFID tags and how much? What are the procedures to get the RFID tags? Are the old gate controllers gone all at once? And how do we distribute the RFID tags uh, to the membership? Uh, we'll come back to the board in September for a vote once we have a full proposal um, developed and completed. Um, just a number of questions I think we need to answer. I need to give the board definitely time to look at a proposal, this implementation packet, and ask questions. So we didn't want to present it at this meeting yet. I will, we can talk about questions or any additional thoughts we have on that um, when I'm done. Uh, South Central Power, it's a long term project, but we'll end up with a club meeting to provide some funds to bury the electrical feed into the lodge from the main power supply over near the lodge compactor. We're still working on developing the budget for this work. Uh, the management committee will we'll be working with the golf committee. And long range planning committee on some long term projects that need to complete, be completed at the golf course. Including a bigger water line from Lake of the Four Seasons, a donor green, winter tea boxes, and new greens. This will be part of the 2022 capital and depreciation budgets. Uh, the late Lakes Enhancement Project Group has been working diligently to put together a draft plan of maintenance and improvement. We hope to present that plan to the board in September or October to use it as a guide in our 2020, 2022 budget planning. Uh, road safety initiative, working with concerned members, the club has taken steps to put lines in the roads and some of our tight corners and to try, try to cut some of the brush back in common areas. We have purchased two large mirrors to be placed in two corners to see if those work I think from donations, by the way. We're also asking members to consider cutting back any foliage that can be trimmed to allow members to better see around the corners. And finally, the management committee will be reviewing the pricing for renting the great room and amphitheater. Uh, determine the club is being adequately compensated for that rental. Thanks, any Jim. questions? No, I'm glad we're looking at it at the cost for rental. Yeah, we just looked at it and it's just the club is probably losing money on some of these rental. I don't just like to shore that up a little bit. Good. Try JJ maybe. did ask for some help on the um, how to figure out the cards mm -hmm. for the security and from the key initiatives. So I do have some people willing to help uh, review that process and okay. help figure yeah, it out. Yeah, he said he was going to reach out to you. And uh, if anybody's got questions, just email us, the management committee. Just we're trying to think of rolling this out smoothly and answer everyone's questions before we bring it to the board. Obviously, there'll be some things we don't think of, but. It's as smooth as possible. Kind of get away from the 30 year old clicker technology to something a little more modern. Any other questions or any questions on the RFID gate proposal? We'll share the uh, final bids with the board prior to September, as well as the implementation guide. Jim, was, that, was this a budgeted item or this is just a priority? It's a priority that we've been kicking around. For, we've been talking about it for about two years. Uh, it'll be a capital expense. Um, we just we didn't have the money prior to the assessment. It was one of the items we had in the assessment increase that we would we would move forward with additional security items, including this RFID gate system. See that that little less money than what we originally talked about it because we were talking about between sixty and seventy thousand. Well, we started to it. By yeah. the time you add up the forty thousand plus the five dollars each, we we're thinking five thousand um, tags. So that puts you back into the sixty-five range. Is, is the, the RFID is that going to be attached to your car, or is that uh, something we'll have under your wallet, your keychain? It's going to work yet. Well, I think we're targeting the actual tags that you put in your car. Windshield. Yeah, something. typically, typically in a windshield, they can be attached to headlights as well, but not recommended just because car washes and that kind of thing would Terrible. would ruin them pretty quick. Um, yeah, typically in a windshield, like a toll tag or even some car washes now that if you're a monthly member, you can you get the little 
tag with the RFID chip in it for your for your windshield. Yeah, I have one in my truck, so if I pull in the car wash and just read it, come on through. But the way the car wash does it is they put it in there because they don't want you tr trying to transfer it <laughs> to your other vehicles because just for that vehicle only. But the idea would be, you know, Eric and Cindy would get two tags and then buy more for your kids or whatever you could. It would have to work out how many you'd be allowed to buy, what they're going to cost, or but they are about five dollars a piece for us to buy those. Any other yeah. questions, Tim? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, delinquencies first. Our primary uh, assessment delinquency as of. I'm gonna, uh, as of June 17th was 22,489. As of July 15th uh, was 28,350. Um, of that, 70, just over 7,500 is only in the 30 day and the, and the late not actually delinquent. Um, road delinquencies as of 617 were 3,050. And as of 715 were, are 10,776. We've got about a page long list of people that have not yet paid the, the road assessment. Uh, the dam assessment loan is paid off. I will remove that gladly from future um, GM's reports. Uh, we are still waiting on closing out that account uh, that we had to hold on to that's got $101,000 in it. We actually had to get a previous board member involved for his signature uh, to be able to get that taken care of, but the bank's been notified and we should be getting a certified check from them within the next week or two, which will then put back into CapEx. Okay. Uh, lodging clubhouse, clubhouse updates. Um, in case you didn't see the email blast from yesterday, or excuse me, from this morning, we will have a wine sampling tomorrow uh, from six, 5 to 6 p.m. up in the lodge. Uh, we've got lots of new wines that we want people to try. So while the samples, you know, don't think of being tight when you only get an ounce because there's somewhere between eight and 10 different wines that we need to try if you drink both red and white. And I've only got about three bottles of, of each that were provided to samples. Um, starting tomorrow, Aaron is going to start, Chef Aaron's going to start chicken parmesan nights. That was far and away our most requested. I think I almost got bullied a little bit to, to bring that back on. Um, so we'll. Uh, We'll be doing those every Wednesday night for the next couple months, at least, and we'll see how they go uh, at some point. I'd imagine we'll, we'll need to move on to something else as, as people get tired of chicken parm every Wednesday. But that will be the Wednesday only special moving forward for a while. Um, and then given that stash, staffing continues to be an issue, if you, you know, if you, if you were to read as many hospitality um, publications that I read far and away. I think the biggest industry suffering from staffing shortages is hospitality. Uh, so we are in the lodge as we start getting students getting ready to go back to school and that kind of thing. Uh, we'll certainly be looking to continue to hire, but in the meantime, we're gonna need to look at alternate business models, whether that means, um, you know, Jeannie brought up maybe self-serve, um, where you'd go up to the, the uh, the cashier in order, and then and then the runner would bring the, the food out to you, um, or even even looking at buffets, non self serve buffets with three or four different items on them on a given night. So uh, we we'll want people to keep coming in, but we need the staff to be able to to do it. The clubhouse. Uh, just a quick reminder: is we've found a lot of blue solo cups on Sunday mornings uh, when the clubhouse opens, that entire golf course, clubhouse area, shelter house at the clubhouse, um, and parking lot and putting green are all sterile to outside alcohol. Uh, that is something that will lose us our liquor license. And given, I think I mentioned this once before, but given that it's my name that is associated with the liquor license, I'm a little bit sensitive about that. So uh, clubhouse opens at 10 o'clock, you can get your, your adult beverages at that point. And then overall staffing updates, security, we're still down two full-time employees. We did hire one part-timer um, and then seasonal, or excuse me, maintenance, we're down just one seasonal employee. We've had a lot better luck getting folks hired 
uh, then Randall has really looking to try and fill that that overnight shift uh, for Randall's crew. Office hours, Jessica's back in case anybody hadn't been in the office in the last day and a half. Um, Jessica's back as of midday yesterday. Penny has a lot of catching up to do, uh, given not only Jessica's absence, but uh, but getting through a new audit company. So it was a very, very tedious process for, for her particularly. And if you um, can say a quick word, just to say nice job to Penny, because I was in here a lot and she had her desk stacked high when it was did. just her. And she, she did a great job through that time when Jessica was gone. Yeah. She really did, and, and and to be able to get everything that the auditors needed, given mm -hmm. that they needed a lot more than than previous auditors because it was because it was their first time through. Uh, absolutely major kudos there. But we're going to keep the the office hours that we got right now up through the end of this month, and then we'll go to open the uh, seven thirty a.m. to six p.m. Monday through Thursday, starting on the second of August, I believe it is, is the first Monday in August. She needs some time to get caught up and get rid of that stack on her desk. Um, concert in the Cove timing, Randall had asked that I mentioned that with, with that occurring on a holiday, um, as, as last year, well, when it was on Memorial Day weekend, I believe, um, a lot of complaints from, from members while they were out on the, while they were out on the lake, not being able to utilize the lake to its fullest potential on the holiday weekend when they've got more family here and that kind of thing. So. Um, certainly a board level decision, but I promised them that I would mention that. Um, and then finally, the club lots, I think were mentioned a little bit earlier. We are down to four sets of those, um, anywhere between one, which is 1684 and then four, which are near the Boer Hill gate over on Taos shown them numerous times and given tours numerous times. Uh, and there's really, because of the. Currently, at least, because of the the steepness of them, the difficulty building, although I've learned anything is buildable out here. Uh, <laughs> my request is to let me, I, why don't we just remove them from inventory? I mean, if you want your GM tied up two hours a tour per time continuously, I've got four people waiting on, on a decision. Uh, I would say it's best just to just to remove them from inventory instead of showing them over and over and over again, hoping for hoping for something. And we're really not in the land sales business. Could you email the lot numbers to us so sure. we could drive by them and take a peek? Sure. And then um, maybe we could e-vote on that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. What about getting volunteers beside yourself, Jeff? Yeah, yeah that's- to show lots. That's I mean, fine. Uh, at one time, I think I was set up where if he couldn't do it, there were four or five people that he could call. Oh, okay, and, yeah, I, heard, I heard that. Instead of just taking them off the lot, or away, uh, assign you don't have to show any of them. Just assign somebody <laughs> to show. Them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, and I'm not saying throw them, certainly not throw them away, but creating additional green space. We had talked to her a little bit earlier about, about potentially water being an issue, water, the, the water table being an issue. So I'm, yeah, I'm just saying for the, for the final four, uh, we've already achieved our budget this year out of the, the two sets sold, uh, that it may be a wise thing to do, but um, I I'll, think I'll get them emailed. Good for you to email us a lot of numbers and we can take a look at it. And we can uh, have an e-vote and it will pass or <laughs> Okay, I will do that. Anything else? That's all. All right, thank you. Um, committee business and reports and fund requests. Habit, how about you up first? Okay, sure. Uh, I've got five of them today and tonight, so I'll try to get through these fast. Though a handful of vendors rallied at the shelter house last Saturday when the uh, the Garden Fest, uh, Arts and Crafts Fest was scheduled at the Organic Garden. Uh, it was only a handful down there. And so the uh, I've been asked by the garden's leadership to make a motion that the board approve the movement of the ninth annual Arts and Garden Fest to this Saturday, July 24th, same hours from 10 o'clock until 2. Second. Okay, any discussion on that? All those in favor of moving the festival this Saturday, please say aye. 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 Okay. 
<laughs> Any opposed? Okay. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. And sticking with the Garden Barbecue Master and member Mike Brohard prepared food for last uh, weekend's fest. I understand it was sold. A lot of it was sold down front and they did raise considerable funds for the garden. I make a motion, though, to reimburse Mr. Brohard $501.82 out of organic garden committee funds that he spent on the food supplies at Kroger Aldi's and the restaurant depot. Second. Okay. Any discussion on reimbursement? Who was the second? Jim. Okay, seeing no discussion, we'll go ahead and vote on reimbursing Mr. Brohard for $501.82. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Nay. This food was really good. I heard. It was excellent. I missed. Okay, well, motion carry. And uh, one more out of the garden. A lot of things are growing out there, apparently. I make the motion to also reimburse Greg Patassin two fifty three and two cents from the organic garden funds for supplies, including propane gas, wheelbarrow tires, the spraying of tomatoes, a power mower belt, feed straw, and a cultivator. That's already been e-voted on. That one has? Yes. You'd stake your tomatoes on that. <laughs> uh, let me look here. That was here. good. That was good. That was a good one. I got it. Very last one. I've got a payment of 211.02 to Mr. Patterson. No, yeah, this is separate. And 42 to Mr. Reese, again, for oh. uh, spring tomatoes and garden supplies. Okay. Well, so. then you know what? You keep your tomatoes because that is exactly <laughs> what this is. So we can move on from that. Then it has been evoked. Uh, okay. Chapel Committee, I make a motion to pay Patrick Lynch $250 from Chapel Committee funds for the planting of a large shade tree at the chapel. Second. Okay, any discussion on that motion? All right. All those in favor of paying Patrick or reimbursing Patrick Lynch $250 for the purchase and planning of that tree, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Nay. And a final motion to reimburse. Oh, motion, sorry. Motion I, carried. Okay. <laughs> I know we got a lot of this. For whatever it's worth. Okay. Oh, sorry. And a final motion to reimburse Nancy McCoy $71.61 for supplies purchased so that Les McCoy could make needed repairs to church benches. 7161 reimbursement. Second. Okay, uh, do we have any discussion on the motion? All right, all those in favor of uh, reimbursing Nancy McCoy $71.61, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. And we want to say a special thank you, Chapel Committee, to the pool committee who donated those sales that some volunteers, wonderful people, put up to help cut down the heat uh, over the over the chapel. So uh, that was a really nice thing the pool committee did. Thank you, pool committee. That all? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mary Beth. Uh, yes. So. The barn is offering back to school haircuts on August 22 um, for age, children ages 5 to 17, 2 to 7 p.m. as a fundraiser for the barn. Christina Perez will be the, um, the hairstylist who will be doing this. So I make a motion that we approve this fundraiser for the barn. I'll second. Okay, any discussion on the fundraiser? What was it? You're going to get your hair cut, Jim. <laughs> Jim, you're too old, but it's for school it's, age it's kids. It's school age kids. <laughs> Think young. Think young. Think young, yeah. Okay, haircuts. Yes, haircuts back to school August 22 for ages 5 to 17. I have been voting for the horses. <laughs> yeah, no, not for the horses. Um, regarding communication, uh, Ginger. We actually have a vote on that. Oh, oh, shoot. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Okay, do, okay. Do we have a second? Do Cabot have... seconded. Okay. Sure. Okay, so then all those in favor of the fundraiser for the barn, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, 
Ginger Reed asks that everybody get their items into the echo timely. Um, it's been, uh, there's been dilly dally on in that regard, partially me, I admit. Um, but it would be helpful to her if people could get their items in on time. Additionally, she is, uh, she's been sick. She was in the hospital this week. So yeah. everyone wish her well. Yes. Um, we also, as mentioned before, had transitioned from the echo uh, being electric from mail only to electronic and that saved the club about 8,000 a year. We have offered opting back in to get it mailed out again and Penny tells me there's about 43 people who have asked to have it mailed to them. So starting in August, that will be mailed out. Um, that's what she tells me. So on the communication front, um, that is about it from Ginger and Penny. I did uh, put together a committee Facebook page. Um, some people did not were not able to see all the posts, uh, and sometimes it takes a few days for the e votes to go or the e blast to go out. And Penny's been really busy, as mentioned. Um, so it's just an extra opportunity for people to see communications, um, trying to come at people from different angles. So they have more opportunity to read what's going on. Um, ACC, nothing um, to say on that. And I think that's it. All right, thanks Mary Beth. Tim. Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, for the golf committee, uh, like same as the uh, Garden Fest, the two two clubs in a putter tournament got postponed or canceled, and so we'd like to have the motion to have it again this coming Saturday, uh, which would be uh, the twenty fourth. Course closes at four. Tournament starts at five. I'd like to make a motion that we allow that. Okay. Is there a second on the motion? Uh, second. second. I'll take it back. Okay, you can. <laughs> okay, Eric seconded. Um, any discussion on that? Right. All those in favor of moving the golf. It's a two club, two club and a putter tournament. Two club and a putter tournament. A tournament. Don't ask me what it is. Um, <laughs> anyway, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries. Uh, would also like to make a motion that Eric Boisco be reimbursed. Uh, Seven hundred and forty-two dollars and thirty-four cents from the golf committee for uh, member guest gifts that have been purchased to this point. Okay, so you're making the motion. A second on that motion. I'll second. Any discussion on that? All right. All those in favor of reimbursing Eric Boisco seven hundred and forty-two dollars thirty-four cents, please say aye. 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 What's the gift? Can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Any opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries, and Eric doesn't know what the gift is. It's not just one gift, is it? Is it one gift? It's it's the beginning of, of a habit, so just be patient. <laughs> and surprise gift. Anything else, Ben? Uh, nothing on the ORV. No. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Okay, I've got uh, activities for youth want to plan uh, two different activities. And so let me state it this way. I'd like to make a motion to allow the starga stargazing event at the ORV track September 10th at 730 for amateur astronomers from astronomers, astronomers from Lancaster will be coming to <laughs> Uh, we'll be coming to set up telescopes. Uh, we hope to see Saturn, Jupiter, some star clusters, as well as some man-made satellites. In addition to close the track that evening at 730. Uh, and then also to, uh, as part of that, to make a $50 donation to the John Glenn Astronomy Park. Second. Okay, so. I can just give this to you. That would help. Yes. So it's a stargazers event on yes. September 10th, closing the track at 730, $50 donation to the John Glenn 
Astronomy, Astronomy Park. Astronomy Park. Yes. All right. Any that about sums it up. Any discussion on that? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. All those in favor? Please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Motion carries. And additionally, they like to I like to make a motion to allow the activities for youth committee a autumn harvest party at the shelter house October 8th, starting at 630 activities to include pumpkin uh, carving pumpkins bonfire and storytelling. And they'd also like to have uh, be approved for up to $500 for expenses for the party. Second. Well, okay, okay thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I, I have a question. Have you checked to see if the shelter house is available? I did not. Okay. What's the date? October 8th. October 8th. She's normally pretty thorough, so I'd be shocked if she did not have it. Check. So, pen, I, I, I think maybe the motion should be pending availability of the shelter house. I'm fine with including that. Okay, and that's. For October 8th, 8th and starting this, at 6 30. 6 30 p.m. And this is, did you say pumpkin painting? Carving pumpkins, okay. bonfire, and storytelling. Okay. So basically a Halloween kind of event. Whatever you want. Probably call. something. Full. And there was a reimbursement they, for, for they want up to from their funds five hundred dollars for up to five hundred dollars for expenses for the party. Pumpkins and such. Those are expensive. Okay. So this is activities for youth. It is a proposed pending availability use of the shelter house on October 8th, 6 30 p.m. Uh, pumpkin carving, etc. Um, and there would also in this motion is a request for reimbursement up to $500 on any expenses yes. for this event. So we have a second, correct? On the motion? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. All those in favor, unless there's discussion. Any no discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposed, nay? Motion carries for the event. Anything else? Um, oh, yeah, uh, utilities committee uh, just Eric sent me a text with just kind of an update. He was just uh, so they're really kind of overseeing what's going on with the uh, South Central power bearing of the cables and so forth. He just let me know that uh, Marty Bendakis and the management is handling the staging area for the contractors, the new buried lines to the lodge and, uh, and managing the contractors using our lakes water. Uh, in addition, the, the, the the committee will handle communication to those members affected by bearing the electrical to the homes. And then personally, I've actually, um, I've already contacted South Central. I have, I have some properties that actually are affected by this. I got a letter from South Central. And um, I guess this is the thing I'm, I'm pointing out, it, I want to point out is uh, just because you want to have your, your uh, wire buried, uh, if your neighbor doesn't want to do it, it may cause conflict and you may not be buried. So hopefully, they're, they're, I believe the deal is South Central is going to pay to bring the uh, trench or bring the wire to your house. And then you would need to go and have a contractor then connect it inside the house. But obviously then you get your lines buried and you have less risk of trees falling on your lines and losing electric. So I hope everybody that is affected by that would consider it might be affected all I got. All right. Thank you. Jim Lloyd. Uh, I've just got a question for probably Jim uh, on the, on, you know, are they going to go over on the other side and take care of us too? Or is, is there plans to do that? Or are they just doing this side? Uh, the, I think the preliminary um, project is just this side. It's basically the main power feed, three phase power feed up to the front. I've talked dark to the side contractors, the dark side. Um, and they, they actually, when I talked to South Central, they told me they, they should expect this project to last 18 months. 
and a different contractor told me that there was a phase two after this one's done to look at going over the other side. There. there is several phases to this project yeah. to eventually bury all yeah. the lines, but the initial phase is to bury the main line. Okay. Nobody likes the dark side. <laughs> yeah. We get shunned. Uh, the dark side gets we shunned. We need some light. Oh, <laughs> we need light. <laughs> we need light. <laughs> Suck it up, cupcake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, nothing from the uh, shooting committee. Uh, the airport committee are moving forward. The planning process for the third annual fly in, all the plans made, and everything done that we can do ahead of time. I'll be having another meeting August 7th and another couple of weeks later, but they haven't set a date yet. They will also be having a meeting for all volunteers approximately three to days prior to this event and we uh, uh, feel that it is necessary because we're anticipating a larger turnout of airplanes and would like to have the volunteer positions covered and understood uh, a little bit of ch change from last year we are going to set up everything over around the, uh, the OVR track the port body there which is great for all volunteers and the planes will line up we're along the strip on this side of the, and we think there's room for at least 20 airplanes over there. Nice. With a, with a fallout, uh, where we were putting it before, get that many, but they are going to need volunteers. They're going to need volunteers, all the pilots back and forth, because we need the pilots and their crew. Brings them in, actually. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, Clubhouse food. Yeah, it's food. it's yeah. just that good. <laughs> it's that good. Well, <laughs> they'll fly from Tokyo for Clubhouse, Clubhouse food. Well, that's that's a hundred dollar hamburger. They don't have to pay for. <laughs> uh, but we are going to need volunteers because we're going to have to figure out some way safely ferry people back and forth across the strip. So we're going to have to have we're going to mark a spot where they can cross. Need volunteers hauling them. Uh, Volunteers parking them the whole nine yards. So, do you want to get an e blast out on that, Jim? Uh, yeah, but I don't think we need to worry about it quite this okay. quick. Uh, I'll let I'll let uh, the boss handle that one. I don't know. Okay. I was, hey, Jim, What's what was the date? the date of that event? I think we approved it at the oh, last meeting, approved, didn't we? Uh, yeah. September eleventh. Okay. Yeah, it, it will be. There will be a, a, a ceremony. Yeah, I mean, really short ceremony uh, on September eleventh. So it's 20 years military aircraft to approve. It's 20 year anniversary. 20 years. It is the 20th anniversary of 9 11. That's impossible. Really. I know. And that's all I have. That was a great event last year, Jim. It was. Really enjoyed it. It really was. It's uh, uh, been talked about all over Ohio. Okay. So thank you very much, Jim. Um, Tom Matthews. Have nothing from any of my committees. All right, thank you. Uh, Annie Garrigan. I don't really have anything. I'll just give Tim's a heads up that um, I have some questions about a pool committee e vote that we need to do, but I didn't want to bring it up tonight because I want to be clear on exactly what we're motioning for. So I'll send that to you probably tomorrow. All right, very good. So let's move on to our next portion, which is open forum. I have listed um, Mary Ellen Swackhammer, Nancy McCoy, Cookie Malkinstrom, and Joe Hibbler. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> hey, I'm Nancy McCoy, lot 340. Uh, I am with the road safety. Committee and Cookie graciously offered to assist me since it's really becoming uh, quite an endeavor that I have taken on. Anyway, the purpose of the committee is for the safety of our roads and improving some of the roads. I can't physically improve a road, but I can improve hopefully the safety so that all uh, that travel are safe on the roads. Um, we are working uh, from donations that the members have submitted to me either by the office, they've dropped them off at my house, or I have gone and picked them up. 
they have given me a lot of input and insight as far as what they would like to see done as far as future safety. Um, Cookie and I both see this as a very growing committee and we are grateful for being under the leadership of a subcommittee uh, with Eric Lapp and Eric Boisco, but we would like to ask the board um, to have our own committee, to be able to form our own committee, our own road safety committee. So not sure the logistics of how to do that, except to let you know we are asking for that. Um, I did have the great privilege, finally, after many years of being here, of meeting Rick yesterday from our maintenance. And uh, I do seem to have quite a bit of his uh, full support. He's very concerned as well about the safety on the roads. Um, he, as well as other members, have advised us about some of the trees and foliage that is obstructing some of the roads and making it increasingly increasingly difficult to see around a curve. So we would like to um, address the board and management on that issue. And I know Jim brought some of it up, but what can we do further um, to implement that? And Rick said he's felt he had the equipment that he would be able to trim some of this foliage back on these dangerous curves. Some of the curves you have to go so far out around and left of center to get past the trees that you're already in another lane. Um, so if those are trimmed back, that would certainly help with the visibility. Um, as Linda mentioned already, we have uh, installed two mirrors, which I'm very excited about. Um, we've installed a 36 inch, inch mirror at the area 54 curve. And hopefully some of you have been able to see that already and benefit from it. And also a 24 inch um, mirror was installed on Natchez by John Jones, former home. So in that area, we are going to be um, purchasing additional mirrors um, with the funds once we determine the size and the curve that we need to put those on. I've been advised by several members where they would like to see some of these, and they do include the dark side. <laughs> Thank you. There are some good ones over there. There are some good curves over there that do need some assistance. Hey, I think Nancy, I'm of... sorry, you're out of time now. Oh, okay. I just want to say the lines, people are doing well on the lines, and we will assist maintenance with the cost of getting Thank additional you. paint. That's it. I have, I have a question. Oh. I have, um, how many more lines are we putting in? I mean, the one by Vandy's house. That, that is going to be done. Okay. It's going to be done. I talked to Rick yesterday. That is going to be done. Unfortunately, he had run out of paint by the only ones that were that he had, and it's a very primitive way of him doing it. So we're looking at uh, the roads committee uh, funding him to get better equipment to apply the paint. So he will be okay. getting additional paint. And again, this is all out of donated funds. It's not coming from the club. So he's going to get with Jeff as far as... Um, looking at additional ways to put the paint down okay. in a better application. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. It Appreciate is good it. having those lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. Helps. Uh, next up, um, Mary Ellen Swackhammer. I thought you did. I got that from Fenny. No, no. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So next up is Joe Hibbler. Hello, everybody. Most of you guys know me. Those of you who don't, I'm Joe Hibbler. Lot 1996. Uh, been a member for nearly 59 years. On the board six, president three. I bring some unfortunate news to you tonight uh, regarding our bylaws. Um, and the way that things need to be done around here. As you know, we're a corporation. We are governed by our bylaws and we must follow those bylaws to a T. So that's how it's governed. My revised code says we'll do it. Robert's rules of orders say we'll do it. Um, fortunately, um, when you have an annual meeting and you're gonna put something on a ballot to have the code of regulations, our bylaws change, my revised code our code says you must give a 60 day mailed notice to the members, which is why it's always been put in the echo because the echo was always mailed to all members. But unfortunately, 
guys stopped mailing echoes and you did not mail these notifications to members. And so got me thinking, I, I heard last night about this issue. I'm not for it or against it because I don't know anything about it, about the electronic vote. Um, but you can't put those on the ballot without a notification 60 days prior to the meeting. Look at Article 4, Section 3. It's in there. Um, so I looked at last year's. Well, the last year either. It was, it was in the echo like it's been for 60 years, but uh, there was no mailing last year either. So the members weren't notified. My revised code says that don't notify by mail that those changes that you voted on are invalid and unenforceable and subject to lawsuits. So I'm just here to say there's been a mistake, a major mistake in two years now. Something needs to be done. Postpone the meeting. I know it's hard, but legally what you're doing is, is illegal according to our bylaws, the state of Ohio. So I'm just here to warn you that there's going to be some repercussions from this to some degree. So you need to make a decision on it. And that, that goes for the board members running for the board. Those have to be mailed to every member. Not posted, doesn't say posted on Facebook. People don't have Facebook or internet. It has to be mailed. That's what the laws say you're going to do. So I just want to bring that to your attention. You guys need to talk about it, do something about it, because if you don't, there's going to be repercussions from it. And just a, another touch from something you said earlier about not reading correspondence. I was president for three years. That's the first thing that should be done. All correspondence to the club, to the board, should be read so that the board knows what these correspondence are. Okay. Joe, I'm sorry. Opinion. I'm sorry. I'm hey, I do have a question though. Yes. Um, what are you proposing be done as far as the voting? I don't know. That's not my responsibility. I mean, I'm a member, I'm a concerned member because it's not done the way our bylaws say it should be done. And according to a higher revised code, it's on the things you've changed is unenforceable. Since it wasn't done last year. Those changes last year are unenforceable, which is the assessment increase. Right. So, you know, that, that could mean you're going to put it back on the ballot. You have to credit everybody those amounts. It, it's going to be messy. Well, um, but go ahead. that's your guys' decision to look that up and find those codes. Sure. I, I read them all last night. I, I didn't write them down what they are. But go ahead. We did talk to our attorney about it. Um, and uh, it says it does say mail. It doesn't say if it has to be prepaid U.S. snail mail or a digital mail. It says must be mail. And it says mail. If you look at the Ohio Revised Code, it actually spells out what they say. First class mail, certified mail. You can do an email, but you would have to change the code to include email. And then you have to opt in and you can opt out of email. But that's not so, what our by, our bylaws say. You will, you will be mailed notification. If you look at all the past echoes for as long as I've been here, it's in there every June. You go to your June echo every year and it's right there, which is great, but you don't mail them anymore. So legally, you're not fulfilling your responsibilities. Well, no, we did start to mail them again. Well, you didn't for this meeting no. is what I'm saying. This meeting and what you're trying to put on the ballot is illegal. What was on the ballot last year is unenforced. I think it's allegedly, you're saying it is illegal, and I think that's alleged because well, we'll I think there's it. an I'm argument. I'm just telling you to look okay. into it. Uh, and we already have started to. I'm good. I hope yeah. you do. Yeah, we already have. Okay. Um, yeah, so what the attorney said is that um, oftentimes that, that these bylaws, well, first of all, when they did the code, um, they didn't have email and they didn't have Facebook and they didn't have, well, it's probably some didn't have computers, I would imagine 50 years, 60 years ago. Um, but uh, that oftentimes the uh, code is written vaguely because the board can then determine how they're going to interpret that and that the board would have to decide how we want to interpret that. I would uh, like to add to that, that if you can't interpret the bylaws. The bylaws are fixed. They are a part of our code of regulation. They, 
bylaws the code. code. The you code. You can't interpret them. They are what they are. If it says mail, you need to put something in. Say, oh, we want to include Joe. On that. Then it'll Joe, we'll that. we'll look at that. I mean, well, I I understand what. Yeah, I know. I understand. You can't interpret the code. It is what it is. <laughs> I, I I think courts may differ on that, but that's something we're going to look at. So yeah, we will. We certainly will. Yeah, so I talked to Greg Potassin also and Penny. Penny said um, we had 1,050 uh, of the e blasts going out with the echo on May 26, which would provide the 60 days notice. And um, it was by digital mail. I understand what your That's position. Okay. I well, I understand your position. I just let me finish, okay? Um, and uh, when I spoke with Greg Potassin, he uh, he thought that they had been we had been doing this for years, um, where it was not an actual mailing going out, but that um, what the attorney said sounded reasonable. Uh, again, I think we need to look into it further and Actually, see what we need to do. Every year prior to 2018. Well, yeah, that's that we made a change to that's when we digital did, went yeah. digital well, thinking it was saving. Say Part of our well, I, we're going to check into it, Joe, and I, I want to just um, make one other comment. Robert's rules of order does not require us to read uh, correspondence. No, we we have an attorney opinion on that because I have checked. Yeah. Then why would anybody correspond if it's not going to be? We read it. I mean, I correspond. With the board of trustees. A few months back. Well, it was never read it here either. And as president of the board, no. you should read every correspondent. Not when re not required. If had a beef, I'll tell them. Hey, I'm I'm on my personal time. Don't tell me now. But if you want to issue address. Send me a letter and I will read And the board, the board reads the letters that are and sent to the board. The but it can't go there. The board read reads the letters that are sent to it. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on then to unfinished business. Uh, reminder, uh, Annie, about the electronic ballots. Yes. <laughs> so this is um, issue two on the ballot for this fall. It is not a replacement for our existing voting capabilities, which is absentee ballots and um, in person voting. So absentees, as we all know in the code says 45 days to 25 days before the annual meeting, you can request an absentee ballot and mail it in. Uh, it just has to be received by the club by the week, week the end of the week before the actual meeting. The electronic voting would be a third option, which would be you could request to vote electronically seven days and up to two days before the board meeting. In which you would be given a secure method to vote what your um, preference would be for the issues that are on the ballot. <clears throat> and again, each household that has that pays one full assessment still would get two votes. If you had additional. Um, lots and paid a full a second full assessment you would get two additional votes and so on and so forth but this would not again replace your absentee ballot option or your in-person option the day of the meeting it would just be a third option that you could enact between that absentee window and the in-person uh, day of the annual meeting window and again, it's important to mention that this this is not in effect, even if it were to pass this year. It's for the the, the year Correct. following. So no one can vote electronically this year. Correct. So this this issue that's on the ballot is to change the code to allow us to do this. So you can't do it to your point, Cabot. Thank you. You can't do it for this August meeting. Um, it would only be an option if it passed in the August uh, vote. We did send out FAQs yesterday um, through an e-blast. So um, we tried to answer questions that people had. If there are other questions, you can send them to the office and I'll work with Penny to get them answered. All right, thank you. Um, 
All right, Beth, did you want to talk about um, election voting procedure and absentee ballots? Sure. Just as a reminder, if you're requesting an absentee ballot, um, needs to be requested by tomorrow, July 21. Um, you can vote and have your absentee ballot turned in to the office by Thursday before the election, which is August 12th by 5 p.m. And um, you can do that by dropping off to the office, having it mailed in and received prior to then, or drop in the locked black box at exit at security. Um, in addition, uh, you can also vote in person at the annual meeting, and that's at one o'clock for registration on August 15th. Uh, the annual meeting will be at 1.30. And after the annual meeting until 3.30, you can actually cast your vote. Uh, if you get an absentee ballot, you may not vote in person at the annual meeting. And you only will get an absentee ballot or be able to get a ballot in person if your dues are paid through July of 2021. So make sure you do that. Um, and it'll be held at the amphitheater if the weather's okay and in the lodge if the weather is not okay. Uh, let's see what else you'd need to have your membership card with you if you're voting in person. And you can read about the candidates in the June and July echoes and the candidates also answer questions that are provided in the June and July echo. Um, and that's it. All right. Thanks, Mary Beth. Um, okay. Let's reaffirm the e votes. Uh, Andy, do you have those or Mary Beth? I don't know which one of you will do that. Uh, I can read them. I, I won't read them as I normally do because I don't have any way to sort them. But um, May 20th, we approved paying Taylor Renner, Rental 507.27 from Social Committee for Tables and Chairs Rental. That was a 6 0 vote. Also, May 21st, pay Conspiracy Ban $4,000 from Social Committee. I think, Annie. Are you reading the wrong stuff? Let's have Tim Weibel read it. That would be great. <laughs> go. Go, Thanks, Tim. go for it, Tim. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> these e-votes uh, on 6-17-21, approved moving the Red Cross blood drive date from November 6th to November 27th. Uh, that was seven, a 7-0 seven and o, seven and o vote, in fact, uh, Let's just do it this way. Okay, 6-18-21, approve the men's golf league to reserve the shelter house on Friday, September 17th, from noon to 11 p.m. for the their year-end party. That also was a 7-0 vote. 6-19, approve the health and wellness committee holding a concert at the amphitheater on September 25th from 6 to 11. Um, it will have a hoedown type activity leading up to the band playing. No funds requested at this time. They will also hold a fundraiser for the H and W committee. That was a 7 0 vote. On 6 2021, approved the creation <clears throat> of a safety sub fund under the utility services committee. 7 0 vote. On 6 2321, Approved reimbursing Eric Boisco $50 from golf committee funds for the purchase of a gift card uh, to be donated, donated to the damn jam. That was a 7 0 vote. On 6 24 21, approved paying Taylor Rental for 18 27 from social committee funds for table and chairs for the June 19th, 2021 concert. Uh, that was a 6 0 vote. On 6 25 21, approved the Lakes Committee hosting a boat parade on the Lake of Four Seasons on Sunday, July 4th from 2 to 4 p.m. That was a 5 0 vote. <clears throat> 6 26 21, approved up to $75 for three trophies for the boat parade. And up to $95 for HAH decals from Lake Committee funds. That was a 7-0 vote. 
on 628.21, approved paying Dana Winship $51.04, and Dwayne Mickey $561.57 from range committee funds for money spent for the trap shoot on June 13th. That was a 6 0 vote. On 63021, approved paying 587. 73 to Nancy McCoy from Chapel Committee funds for a six by four foot storage cabinet. That was a 7 0 vote. On 63021, <clears throat> approved closure of the golf course from 9 30 to 1130 during women's leagues, women's league play starting Thursday, July 1 through the remainder of their league season. That was a 7 0 vote. <clears throat> On 7-121, approved paying $100 from social committee funds to the member guest outing to sponsor a whole. That was a 7-0 vote. <clears throat> On 7-821, reimbursed Kelsey Witt $215 from the AFY Cat Sub Fund for the spaying, spaying and neutering of cats. That was a 7-0 vote. On 71321, approved reimbursement of expenses to Sherry Panacea for the Teacup Golf Tournament, a total of $247.14. That was a 7 0 vote. On 71321, approved the Social Committee to use $300 from committee funds to purchase Lodge gift cards for debt. Tour participants. That was a 5 0 vote. On 714, approved chapel committee funds payout of $1,250 to pay speakers and music leaders through August and Labor Day Sunday. That was a 6 0 vote. On 714 <clears throat> 21. Reimbursed Carrie Yankee $15.40 from AFY funds for raffle prize baskets at the Dam Jam. That was a 6 0 vote. On 7 15 21, approved Lakes Committee to donate $100 to the Road Safety Committee. That was a 6 0 vote. And on 7 15 21, approved payments of $211.02 to Greg Patassin and $42 to Drake, Drake Reese from Organic Garden Committee funds for garden supplies and spraying of tomatoes. And that was a 6 0 vote. What was that first one? <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Give me a drink of water. <laughs> Does that uh, control the that, that, That's it. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a motion to accept those, right? I believe so. Okay. I second. Thank you, Cabot. Uh, do we have any discussion on the e-votes? Uh, seeing no discussion, let's vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed, nay? The only thing I'm going to add, uh, of course. Motion carries. <laughs> um, there's been a little bit of confusion, and I just took this over during Annie's absence, but um, the Thursday before the board meeting, we stopped accepting e-vote requests, and I had a couple that came in. As you can see, I had six in the last three days prior to that, and a couple more were requested after that that I had to say no to, so make sure all your committee chair people realize that, you know, there's a, it's state sensitive. Well, and then it can always be brought to the board meeting. Right. And we can vote here. That's correct. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up, Tim. Uh, any new business? I, well, we don't have any new business. I, I have some new business I'd like to bring. Well, then, go ahead. Um, I, I, I'm just sitting here steaming, and I just can't get over it. We're the board. I am disappointed that you, of your inability to go and take on this Anna Kerrigan situation. I was besmirched publicly. Our the integrity of our election is who knows now. She was absolutely 
a violator of our ethics code and you're going to sweep it under the rug. Nope, there's no sweeping. Okay. It's just wrong. Thank you. Appreciate your comment. Okay. Old business. New members, Mary Beth. Kimberly Evans, lot 319. Catherine and Robert Kelly, lot 248. Nanette and Daniel Sharp, lots 1605, 1645, 1646. Sherry and Isam Sala, lots 1281, 1306, 1307. Julie and Sean Martin, lots 803, 804. Linda Culver Smith Trust, lots 283, 284, 285. Timothy Gill, lots 275, four, oh, I'm sorry, 475 and 476. Brian and Caitlin Stewart, lots 2100 through 2103. <clears throat> and Chris Milburn, lots 330 and 331. Lots of new members. I make a motion we approve and accept the new members. I have a second. I'll second. All those in favor, any discussion on new members? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay, motion carries. And now we will need a motion to adjourn to executive session. I'll make that motion. Uh, second. I'll second. Thanks, Cabot. Any discussion? Now. Have a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Motion carries. We're moving into executive session. Thank you. Do we have a few votes? Yes. Recording again. Okay. We are back in open session. Um, the dog bite issue was addressed. Um, I'll be issuing uh, an Article 9. Um, we also discussed um, what to do in terms of what Mr. Hibbler brought up, and we will be um, immediately dealing with our council to see the best way to address that. We will then um, get this to the membership as soon as possible. So we want to be moving forward as quickly and as openly as possible to address this oversight. So I don't have anything else. So, could I have a motion then to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second it. Last one. Maybe. Maybe not. All those, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, motion to adjourn. Thank you.